shot of his career. Inaccurate. Checkers is not a famous golfer. In fact, he is not ranked among top professional golfers. Furthermore, this game is of little to no consequence. Sat, this is just my imagination! The gator stares back at him, indifferent to his dream of greatness. 36 inches separate Checkers from his goal of becoming champion. Right, Snoozer, can I have a bigger club? This thing's tiny. Rules are rules, Checkers! <sighs> the crowd watches with indescribable tension. He seems to be taking an unusual amount of time to plan his strategy. Checkers has been battling shaky confidence all season long. He lines up for the shot. And... Oh, he misses! Obstruction! Checkers! He's part of the game! Come on, he barked when I was shooting! Hey! You can't do that! Oh, come on! Snoozer, that's not in the rule book! Snoozer, what page in the Gator Golf rule book does it say I can't use my cool tool to make a shot? No. Anyway, I don't want to play golf anymore. Alright. Oh, Snoozer, it's getting kind of late. We should probably get going soon. Where are we going? Well, I wasn't exactly sure where we were going to go today, but I think I have a pretty good idea now. Seatbelts. Check. Backpack? Check, check. All right, snoozer. Ascending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. So where are we going today? All right, Snoozer. Well, I will give you three hints, and let's see if you can get it. Now, I know we said we we're going to be talking about freshwater animals today, but the animal we're talking about we haven't mentioned yet. So, hint number one. It is very warm. Hint number two. It's outdoor. And hint number three. There are lots of teeth where we're going. Hmm, I'm confused. All right, well, you know what, Snoozer? What animal do you think about when you think about teeth? Hmm. Sharks! No. Dinosaurs? No! Uh... It's green. Crocodiles! Ugh, uh, it's alligators, Snoozer. We're talking about alligators today. Oh, I was close. Pretty close, Snoozer, but alligators are really cool, and the place we're going has lots and lots of alligators, which do live in fresh water. Neat! Who knew? Yeah, but we're also going to be talking about other freshwater animals. Of course, we've got turtles, we've got beavers, we've got otters, really, really amazing animals that live in fresh water. But fresh water, Snoozer, actually doesn't exist that much on Earth. In fact, less than 1% of all water on planet Earth is fresh water. That's it? Yeah, 0.5% in fact. And all the animals I just mentioned occupy that water. So that's why it'll be really cool to go and meet with an alligator today. Yes, I've never met a real alligator before. I wonder if they like me. Yeah, and I'm really excited to talk about turtles today. Wait a minute, we already talked about turtles. No, not recently at least. Yes, we did, and I met a turtle at Hidden Valley. <laughs> no, Snoozer, you met a tortoise before. We haven't met a turtle yet. A tortoise? Yeah, tortoise, turtle, completely different things. You know what, let me show you. So this right here is a turtle, you can see, and that is a tortoise. They look the same! They are the same! No, Snoozer, they're not the same. Look, 
The turtle has flippers. You see those? And the tortoise has feet. I'm not seeing it. All right, Snowy, you know what? Let's bring on Zot. Zot, can you give us information about how turtles and tortoises are different animals and why? Zot, the robot, at your service. Activating excited voice. Turtles and tortoises are closely related. They are both reptiles from the same family. The main difference between the two is that turtle is the name given to water dwellers, and tortoise is the name given to land dwellers. Turtles are found in Africa and America. Its shell is lighter and more streamlined than that of a tortoise. To enable swimming, it has webbed feet with long claws. Turtles are omnivores, eating both vegetation and meat. Their lifespan is shorter than that of a tortoise, with an average of 20 to 40 years, and a maximum of 86 years. Tortoises are found mainly in Asia and Africa, but also in America. It has a rounder, bumpier, heavier shell than a turtle. Its spent legs are short and sturdy. Tortoises are usually herbivores. Their long lifespan is longer than that of a turtle, with an average of 80 to 150 years, with a maximum of 188 years. Turtles and tortoises are both kept as pets but can be difficult to care for because of their long lifespan. Turtles are more common as pets, though tortoises are easier to care for. Goodbye. See, Snoozer, there you go. Now they are similar, but they're very different at the same time. They both have shells, but they have different diets and lifestyles. But I will give you that, Snoozer, they do look pretty similar. So where are we seeing a turtle today? There is somewhere in Fuzzleland that I believe we'll be able to find a real turtle. Oh, goody good! Yeah, guess what else? What else? It is time to pull up the map. We are headed for Rainbow Way. Once we cross through, we'll be right at our destination. Everglades Holiday Park. Along the way, we're going to get a health tip from Dr. Dan. We're going to be meeting with a real turtle and your teacher, Mrs. Hamilton, is coming on to do a turtle craft with you! Aww! I am going to have my very own turtle that I made! This is going to be a perfect day! Oh! Here come the books! Alright, let's check out a few. What was the button for my net? That one. What do we get? Here you go, Snoozer. You're Not the Turtle by Dr. Seuss. And Jack, the Story of a Beaver by Shirley E. Woods. Great! Another Dr. Seuss book. Now, I know You're Not the Turtle very well. I've been reading it for a long time. It's a classic story about the king of the turtles, Yertle, who wants his kingdom and throne to be bigger. He starts to make the other turtles stack up so his throne can be bigger and bigger, even though it's making the other turtles upset. So what happens next? You'll have to read and find out. This is a book about being greedy. Yertle is a very greedy turtle, and he wants more and more power. He isn't being very kind because he's only thinking about himself. So, Snoozer, imagine you had a toy, but you wanted more toys. You wanted a hundred toys, so you get a hundred toys, but then you just want a thousand. You'd never be happy. You just keep wanting more and more things. And that's Yertle's problem. He just wants more and more, even though the other turtles are not happy. He still wants more turtles to stack up so he can be king of not just the turtles, but other animals and places. That sounds terrible. Those poor turtles. I bet their shells hurt really bad. You're right, Snoozer, and this story isn't just about Yertle, it's about the other turtles that Yertle is ruling over. Especially a little turtle at the bottom named Mac. Mac knows that the turtles need food and care too, but it isn't fair for Yertle to force the other turtles to just stack up like that while he is sitting on them. No! It isn't fair! So what happens? Well, we'll just have to read this story tonight. Now this is a story about turtles, but it's a fictional story. If we want to learn about real turtles, we'll have to go to the library and check out more books. 
And there are so many different books about turtles and tortoises, and this would be a great time for us to get really involved in that. But while we're talking about turtles, Snoozer, how about we get all of our pencils, crayons, coloring materials together, because it is time to bring on Mrs. Hamilton and make your turtle craft. Yay! All right, let's bring on Mrs. Hamilton right now and get to work. Well, hi, Snoozer. Are you excited to make your craft today? Of course I'm ready. Well, that's great to hear. Well, our turtle today is going to look like this. All right, so this is the sheet we gave. It looks like this. So the first thing we need to do is grab our scissors, have your glue nearby, and let's get cutting. All right, I think I'm ready to go. So let's see, I need a head. Where am I gonna put my feet? You decide. Do you want your head going up or straight out? So many choices. All right. Let's see. I think I'm gonna have mine looking up just a little bit, just to make it my own. Maybe he's looking for a fish or something. Okay, there we go. I'm happy with mine. Are you happy with yours? Here's my turtle. Oh, that's great. Well, I had great fun making my turtle. I'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. And now, the question of the week. How many teeth does an alligator have? I think an alligator has 1,000 teeth. I think an alligator has 100 teeth. I think an alligator has two teeth. I think an alligator has 17 teeth. I think it depends. What if an alligator lost all his teeth in a skiing accident? Then it would have zero teeth. Oh, unless they grow back. Oh dear, this is tough. Thanks for joining us for the Question of the Week. I made a turtle! Well, that is a super job, Snoozer. I'm going to name him Mac. Just like the turtle from the story. Well, that's a great idea, Snoozer. Yes, I think so too. If I do say so myself. All right, well, let's talk about the other book. Jack, The Story of a Beaver by Shirley E. Woods. A love of nature shines through in this story of a beaver who matures from a helpless infant to a brave and hardworking member of the colony. This is what we call a coming of age story. The beaver grows up and learns to help others out and play his part. Unfortunately for Jack the beaver, he finds himself in some trouble when bears, wolves, bobcats, and trappers come after him and other beavers in his family. Some sad things happen to Jack and his family, so he has to grow up quickly and learn to act like a grown-up. Like all beavers, Jack learns to fell trees and make a beaver nest. To find out what happens next, we'll just have to read this book. Now this book is definitely for older readers. But for someone like you, Snoozer, there are lots of other books at the library we could check out that have beavers in them. Hmm, I don't know much about beavers, but they sound pretty cute and squishy. Hmm, all right, well, let's bring back Zot to give us some information about beavers. Zot, the robot at your service, reactivating, excited voice. There are two species of beaver, the European or Eurasian beaver and the North American beaver. Beavers are the second largest rodent in the world, after the capybara. The beaver is mainly a nocturnal animal. The large front teeth of a beaver never stop growing. 
The beaver's constant gnawing on wood helps to keep their teeth from growing too long. Together, beaver colonies create dams of wood and mud to provide still, deep water in order to protect against predators such as wolves, coyotes, bears, or eagles. And also so they can float food and building material to their homes. Goodbye. Thanks, Ot. So, Snoozer, beavers have teeth that just keep growing and growing, and they never stop growing, just like rabbits. But they don't eat meat, they only eat plants, so we call them herbivores. Another thing about beavers is, you know how I close my eyes like this, and now I can't see? Yeah? Beavers have transparent eyelids, which means they can see through their eyelids, and that helps them to see when they're underwater. Aww, uh, so they are like goggles! Absolutely, Snoozer. I really like beavers because they work really hard, and it's great to see them build stuff. How cool is it to see a beaver's nest knowing that the beaver actually built that? I want to build a beaver's nest, just like a real beaver! Now, beavers, of course, have a lot of practice, so they get really good at it, but maybe one day you'll be able to build your own beaver's nest. You know what? Hey, Zot, do you have any other books about beavers and turtles and other freshwater animals? Zot, the robot, at your service. Today's selections are The Busy Beaver by Nicholas Oldland, Frog and Beaver by Simon James, I'll Follow the Moon by Stephanie Lisa Tara, Franklin the Turtle by Paulette Burgius, The Ugly Duckling by Hans Christensen Anderson, Salmon Stream by Carol Reed Jones, Books featuring freshwater animals. Goodbye. Thanks, Zot. What a great list! Some great animals we just talked about. And of course, Franklin, that's a whole series of books about a turtle, and there's a lot of other freshwater animals in that story. Of course, The Ugly Duckling, that's a classic story. What do you like about that list, Snoozer? All of them! Woohoo! The Ugly Duckling! Now that sounds fascinating! I've never seen an ugly duckling before. Ducklings are cutie pies. Awesome, Snoozer. Hey, we are right outside of Shade Tree Pond, and that is where the turtle lives. Oh boy, a real turtle lives there? Can we go see him now? Yeah, let's park right down here and go meet with a real turtle. If you would like to email Checkers and Snoozers, send your emails to checkers at checkerslibrarytv.com. We always look forward to hearing from you. Alright, Snoozer, here we are. Now let's take a look around and see if we can find Goober the Turtle. Hmm. There she is! I see her! You're right, Snoozer, there she is! All right, we're gonna go over there, but remember, turtles can be a little bit shy, so we have to be really careful when we visit her. Here she is, Snoozer. Look how she moves, Snoozer. She's using all four of her legs and she's crawling through the ground. So Goober is an Eastern painted turtle. Now when she burrows into the ground like that, she's gonna do that to catch food like bugs. She'll do it to find a new home or to keep cool. What's on the bottom of her? Well, Snoozer, I know Goober pretty well, so she'll let me pick her up. But in the wild, we don't want to pick up turtles because they might get frightened. So let's see what Goober looks like on the inside here. Why is she called a painted turtle? Now, tucking in all four of her legs and her head keep her safe from predators, and her shell will protect her very well. Now, as you can see, she's got orange coloring all around her shell and along her neck, and that is why she's called a painted turtle. Oh, I get it! Now let's take a look at the top of her shell. 
So as you can see, she's got a very hard shell. And as I mentioned, it keeps her safe from predators. And it also helps her camouflage into different environments. Let's put her down in the ground here. It almost looks like a rock looking at it from here. As I mentioned, that helps her camouflage. Yeah, that is a really hard shell. There she goes, Snoozer. Now look at her webbed feet. She's got feet that allow her to move along the land by crawling, and also it makes her an excellent swimmer. There she goes! I think she's going back to Shade Tree Pond. Goodbye, Gilbert! Snoozer, we've been talking a lot about freshwater animals and they're spending a lot of time in the water, so I think it would be a great time to bring on Dr. Dan and ask him about water safety, because that's really important. We all like to go in the water. Oh yeah, I really like the water. That is a good idea. All right, Snoozer, let's bring on Dr. Dan and ask him all about being safe in the water. Hey Snoozer! Yes, you know I love talking about water. We've talked about it a few times already so far. Now water is great for us for a number of reasons. First of all, as we've discussed before, we have water all throughout our body, so we need to drink plenty of water throughout the day. And we need to drink fresh water, not ocean water like last time, fresh water. Another thing that water is great for is exercise. When we swim in water, we're using practically every muscle in our body, so it's a fantastic workout and a lot of fun. Now playing in water and exercising in water is fantastic, but we have to remember to do it safely. There's a couple quick things you need to remember anytime you're gonna be in the water. Number one, most important, is to never swim by yourself. You should always have at least a friend, but preferably an adult with you. Never ever go into a pool, a lake, an ocean, never go into water by yourself. Always have a swim buddy with you, preferably a few people. Another thing that's super important to remember is wearing a life jacket or a life preserver. We always need to wear a life jacket when we're going to be out on a boat or in a deep lake or in an ocean. Anytime we're going to be in a large body of water, we need to wear a life jacket at all times and make sure your life jacket fits you properly. Something else we need to be aware of is how good of swimmers we are. If we don't really know how to swim or we're not very good at it, we should not be swimming in a lot of water. Just a few feet where you can stand is fine, but if you're going out into the deep water, you really should know how to swim, and if you don't, make sure you stay closer to the shore and with an adult. Now, if we remember to stay safe, being out on the water can be tons of fun and lots of exercise. So make sure you spend a lot of time in the water this summer, just do it safely. Very helpful. Bye, Dr. Dan. All right, snoozer, catch you later. Well, thanks, Dr. Dan. Wow, that is some great information. Next time we're out in the fresh water, snoozer, we're gonna have to remember some of the tips Dr. Dan mentioned for us. Snoozer, we're at the rainbow. Wow, well, if we're gonna cross through Rainbow Way, we need to be wearing our safety suits. All right, snoozer, brace yourself, changing into our safety suits. Going through the rainbow. We're here at Everglades Holiday Park, famous for their airboat tours, the Gator Boys, and of course, alligators. 
Now it's time to explore the Everglades. Our mission, find a real alligator in the wild. This is so cool, we're on a real airboat. I really hope we meet an alligator today. Looks like we're speeding up. Yahoo! We're going fast now! So what other animals live in the Everglades? Well, Snoozer, it's not just alligators that live in the Everglades. Some other animals include the coral snake, the crappy fish, Florida panther, fox, peacocks, egrets, eagles, the largemouth bass, skunks, turtles, turkey vulture, and alligator gar. And the best part is, some of these animals are on display here at Everglades Holiday Park, and you can visit with them. You can even meet baby alligators. Oh boy, that's cool! Yeah, and look over there! That's Vulture Island. And we can see how it got its name. Oh, those are spooky looking birds. Vulture Island. In the wild, we don't always see these animals. They tend to stay away from humans. Alligators stay low and in the weeds a lot. So let's take a look around here and see if we can find one. I don't see one yet! Yeah, we need to stay patient. Oh, look at that, Snoozer! Oh my goodness! A real alligator! And it's swimming! We found it! Yep, there's the alligator. And just like I said, the alligator wants to stay away from us. So we're gonna leave it that way. But it's great to see it out here. Mission complete! Now it's time to head back and meet the Gator Boys. like that. Wowie! This alligator's name is Godzilla. They call him that because he's so large. The average alligator has 80 teeth, 40 on the top and 40 on the bottom. Alligators will lose their teeth throughout their lives, and the cool thing is their teeth will actually grow back. Hmm, very interesting. Be careful, checkers! He looks hungry! Uh, some other cool things. Now, first off, these are obviously his eyes right here, but there's a couple of interesting things about them. Now, alligators actually have a third eyelid. So we have the normal, you know, up and down ones. Right. They have a third one that comes across. That's called a nictitating membrane. And you have to look really closely to yeah. see it. But it's kind of oh. like a swim goggle. And you'll see it right here as he opens. It looks like it's coming the opposite way, and then there's like another fold. Yeah, and it'll come right across. Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three eyelids? I have zero eyelids! <laughs> and he knows his name. He can respond to it. Really? They can learn their names in a single day. I've seen that Snoopy who's back over there. He learned his name in one day. <laughs> called his name, gave him food. Next time he called his name, he turned right around. Like, yeah, you got more food for me, dude? So tons of personality that go through constant mood swings, just like people. Some days are in a good mood, some days are in a bad mood. Tons of personality, tons of different emotions, awesome. and just super complex animals. When you think about that brain to body size ratio, you'd never expect that, but they're very, very intelligent animals. <laughs> He's not so scary. One thing's for sure, Snoozer. Everyone here at Everglades Holiday Park doesn't just know about alligators. They really care about them. And now it's time for... The Joke of the Week. What type of bait does a librarian use to catch fish? A bookworm. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Thanks, everybody. Well, that was great, Snoozer. So now we've talked about freshwater animals and saltwater animals. Those are the animals that live in the ocean. Now, there's a lot of amazing animals that live in the oceans. We mentioned octopuses and dolphins and whales, amazing creatures. But a lot of great creatures also live in freshwater. So it's really important to know about them and understand how important freshwater is for them. So there's of course some simple things that we should be doing to conserve water, like not leaving the hose run too long, not leaving the water too long when we're brushing our teeth, and things like that. So next time we're at the library snoozer, I think we might want to check a book out about water conservation. The more we understand about water and water conservation, the more we can do to help freshwater animals. And next time, Snoozer, we're going on a great trip because we're going to be meeting some really, really exciting animals, which is coming up soon on our next Reading Road Trip.